Andrew, thank you so much. Well, it has it's about to be a very busy weekend for us here in the Lilac City from the St. Patrick's Day Parade to a sold out Spokane Velocity FC's a soccer game and a Spokane Chiefs game. The downtown Spokane partnership says tomorrow will be the unofficial kickoff to Spokane's event season. More than 10,000 people are also expected to flock to the podium for a middle school basketball tournament from 11 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon tomorrow. Washington Street Bridge, Spokane Falls Boulevard and Main Avenue will be closed for the parade, which starts at noon. The main thing is just to be patient. Uh, don't don't get in a big hurry and try and find some place to park early because you're going to there's going to have to be walking to any one of those three events. The Velocity FC soccer game starts at 2 in the afternoon. The Chiefs game will be at 6 in the evening and the basketball tournament will run at the podium all day long. A Spokane Public Facilities District says people should also consider looking into public transit. And if you find yourself downtown this weekend, we are in store for a beautiful stretch of spring like weather. It's probably another reason why a lot of people are wanting to check out these events. Meteorologist Michelle Boss tracking the late, very latest for us tonight when it comes to your forecast. And this is beautiful weather that's just going to keep on giving. Not only are we going to enjoy a beautiful weekend, but it's going to extend into early next week with some very spring like temperatures. 49 degrees right now, still pretty mild for 10 o'clock at night this time of year, considering our average high is about 49 degrees. It's cooled off into the upper 30s in Deer Park and Sand Point, 43 in Moses Lake, 48 in Lewiston, and 43 in Pullman. Do expect temperatures to stay above freezing in Spokane but could uh, dip just a couple degrees below freezing in the surrounding area. So a little bit cool to start the day, but should be a nice warm up as we expect plenty of sunshine. We're looking at mostly clear skies tonight and we'll continue with the sunny skies. First thing tomorrow morning again, temperatures starting off in the mid 30s and warming up quickly into the lower 60s on Saturday. Mostly sunny skies again on Sunday and even warmer highs in the mid 60s. Well, Boeing is directing airlines to check its 787 Dreamliner cockpit seats. This comes after a LATAM Airlines plane dropped suddenly on a flight to New Zealand Monday, injuring dozens of passengers. A flight attendant reportedly hit a switch on the back of a pilot seat, pushing a pilot into the controls. Boeing says it sent a message to airlines recommending they inspect the seat and switch at the next maintenance opportunity. The FAA is now reviewing the alert from Boeing. So who exactly flies Dreamliners? Well, United Airlines is the largest operator of the 787. While Alaska Airlines does not currently fly any 787 Dreamliners, it will acquire the planes when its merger with Hawaiian Airlines is finalized. Hawaiian received its first Dreamliner three weeks ago and begins flying the jet next month. For the first time in Washington State history, you won't have to pass the bar exam to become a lawyer. Today, Washington State became only the second state in the U.S. to officially approve alternatives to the bar exam. Oregon, for your information, is the other state. After more than three years of study, a task force came back with two findings. They say the traditional bar exam disproportionately blocks marginalized people from entering law careers, and the test is minimally effective for ensuring competent lawyers. The Washington State Bar Association will now work to create a plan for lawyer licensing. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee back to working his way through a stack of more than 350 bills passed by state lawmakers this session. This morning, he signed another round of them. They include a bill banning the sale of cosmetics tested on animals, a bill establishing a graffiti abatement and reduction pilot program with WashDOT, and a bill allowing high school students on food assistance programs to automatically qualify for the Washington College Grant. Governor Inslee already signed dozens of bills into law this week, including one establishing a memorial for fallen firefighters at the Capitol. It'll include the names of more than 280 firefighters and paramedics who died in the line of duty. Meanwhile, the state's hate crime law has been expanded. Now anyone who commits a hate crime on public property could be charged with a felony and face up to five years in prison, along with a $10,000 fine. While well, tracking some of your national headlines tonight, a special prosecutor in former President Donald Trump's election interference case in Georgia has resigned. Nathan Wade had been romantically involved with Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, and the judge overseeing the case ruled one of them had to go. Wade's resignation allows Willis to remain on the case. 
In a statement, former President Trump's attorney disagreed with the judge's decision and pledged to use, quote, all legal options available to dismiss the case. 18 others are also charged in the case. Four pleaded guilty, including Kenneth Chesbro. His former attorney expects the defendants will appeal. For all of the defendants in this case, I'm sure it's a sad day because it really just shows that while if they make mistakes, they might get prosecuted for it. If Fonnie Willis and her team make mistakes, if they lie under oath, if they show bad judgment, there's absolutely no consequences. The ruling comes days after the judge dismissed six of 13 counts against Trump in the indictment, but the case remains intact for now. One of four criminal cases the former president faces as he tries to unseat President Joe Biden. Well, time right now for your night beat for a quick look at the day's at top stories. There will not be any criminal charges against the Spokane police officers who shot and killed a Spokane man. You may remember in September 2022, police were called to Robert Bradley's home by a person who claimed their neighbor was in their yard with an AR-15 style rifle. When police arrived, they say Bradley was holding a gun. They asked him to lower it, but say he refused. And that's when two officers shot him. Bradley's estate is suing the city over the shooting. They're expected to go to trial in November. A Royal City woman recovering in the hospital after a shooting inside a home. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, she was shot during a domestic violence incident overnight. The shooter then turned the gun on himself. Now it's not clear tonight how they are connected to each other. Children were inside the home at the time, but weren't hurt. And it could soon cost homeowners thousands of dollars less to sell their homes. A 6% commission, a standard in home purchases, has been eliminated. The National Association of Realtors announced that today, by some estimates, real estate's commissions are expected to fall 25 to 50%. The average price American, of an American home for sale, which is about $417,000, sellers under the 6% model pay more than $25,000. That fee could fall by between six and twelve thousand dollars. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website, creme.com. And in other Northwest news tonight, Idaho's namesake is one step closer to service. The USS Idaho set for its christening this weekend, but first, tribal leaders from Idaho gave the boat and the crew their blessing. Men from Shoshone Bannock and Nez Perce tribes have passed around a peace pipe. The leaders say this pipe has herbs from the Bitterroot Mountains. One leader said it's from the highest point in the state. Most of the men meditated on the meaning of the moment and the ceremony. We talked a lot about being a warrior and there's a link there between just the military service that uh, many of them have experienced, but on, on back to the thousands of years and the you know the warriors that have existed in their culture. I don't know of any other ship has, that's connected a ceremony like this. A tribal leader from the Shoshone Bannock also patted down the crew members, which also serves as a blessing where they can accept the Holy Spirit and blow away burdens and bothers of the world, including stress, anxiety, worry and fears. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.